Having supported Paralympic sport for eight years, Attitude earns a high honour. We are invited to film in London on behalf of the International Paralympic Committee. The organising committee has always insisted the London Games would change the way society views Paralympic sport. It's hard to get a gauge on how many people are here, but it's, it could be up to a quarter of a million people in the park each day. I was also invited here as a commentator for wheelchair rugby. This is my third Paralympics, but first where I'm not here as an athlete. And the vibe is so different. As an athlete, it's all about chilling, keeping things quiet, looking after yourself. Here, now, it's all about taking the energy of the place. Day one, we've got a double header. New Zealand athletes are competing in both swimming and cycling. The velodrome and aquatic centre are a kilometre apart. Swimmers Sophie Pascoe and Rebecca Dubber compete today. There's no chance of pre-race interviews. The athletes are in full competition mode. Swimming has 148 events. That's because the Paralympic Games cater for swimmers across 14 classifications and multiple disabilities. Kiwi Rebecca Dubber is 19. It's her first Paralympics. Her disability means she has no strength in her lower limbs. It's her upper body that drives her through the water. Rebecca comes home fifth, but less than half a second behind the bronze. There definitely was the expectation for the medal. I will admit that I'm disappointed that I didn't get that medal, but um, I'm definitely coming away with a lot of um, lessons learnt, um, things that I can take on board um, for the next four years, so that hopefully next time I have those expectations, I'll walk away with the medal that I expected. Whatever um, comes out of it next year, um, I'm still going to stick with it and I'm going to fight for it and fight to do better at World Champs next year and kind of prove to them that, well, I had a bit of a hiccup at my first Paralympics, but, you know, don't count me out yet because I'm still young and I've got, four more, I've got at least four more years left in me for Rio. Sophie Pascoe holds world records in three of her six events. A much loved New Zealander, very focused walking out here. I do get nervous, and if I'm not nervous, I know that I'm not ready to race. Thank you, Mark. Well, they're away well. Pascoe perhaps the quickest off the blocks in lane four. And it's Pascoe into the lead. Three, her world record, very strong at the butterfly leg. Wide with the strokes, we're trying to make it streamlined and effective. Two full body lengths ahead of the rest of the field and her nearest rival, beautiful balance in the backstroke there. Very strong indeed. Rotating down through the body, cutting it very, very well. 65-28, a perfect turn. Surfacing some seven metres down the pool, the world record is on. Phil can do nothing about this. It's the same order as we go into this final turn. Let's watch the clock. 149-49. Rhea Bova in silver for Russia. Mortimer for Canada in bronze. But here comes the champion. Surely it's going to smash the record at 228-73. Five metres to go.
225, 65, a new world record, a gold medal for Pasco. It feels amazing, you know. I just went out and I wanted to just really give it my all in for all four disciplines. Um, my breast stroke is my weakest stroke and I just wanted to bring it back in that last 100 and that's exactly what I did, you know. 25 was actually an unexpected time, so I'm over the moon with that. I was going to be happy with the 27, but uh, yeah, just overwhelmed at the moment. <laughs> Just to give you an idea of the scope of this place, we've got the athletic stadium here, we've got the aquatic centre right here, way over beyond even being able to see it is a velodrome. Filming at an event like this is complex. Various broadcasters secure the rights in their own country. Those right holders are the only media that have direct access to footage from the multi-camera shoot. The rest of us grab what images we can from the appointed media vantage points. Fiona Southern had won bronze at the World Champs in Los Angeles and made it clear this is her goal in London. Less than four minutes later, Fiona is clutching her bronze medal, her dream fulfilled. I'm just out of this world, it's just mind-blowing. Yeah, I'm just, yeah, yeah. I just, there's no words to describe how it feels really. It's been a long, long journey, but I've Taranaki pharmacist Nathan Smith is competing at his first Paralympics. A single leg amputee, he's competing in the classification alongside other amputees. He finishes outside of the medals. This is the media centre. We're one of about six and a half thousand journalists here. It's the type of place you come to, you know, do a bit of work. There's workstations, but there's all the information you need as well, uh, drop boxes, and then just things like lockers and anything else you might need. It's in a booth inside this centre that I commentate, well away from the action. So I guess what we could do with early on is a bit of um, what wheelchair rugby is, how it... Having played this game for 12 years, it's a great chance to use my knowledge. Let's go then. Good luck. Cool. Cheers, man. The Paralympics has got a massive global audience now. Just explain wheelchair rugby to me. In a nutshell, it's four a side, uh, and you've got to get over halfway within 12 seconds and then score within 40 seconds. To score a point, you go through the cones at the end of the goal line with the ball in your lap, ball in control. And there we have tip-off. So the game's underway. Half ball. 
Sweden in yellow, Belgium in red. Lars will be one of the standout players for Belgium. A lot of function. Uh, he actually has cerebral palsy. Most of the players in the game have spinal cord injury, but uh, Lars is, is uh, different there with cerebral palsy. And going for the gamble. Pretty tight there, just trying to get the ball, but he touched the body, and that's why we go to the bin. And he'll be in the bin for up to a minute or until the other team scores. And the chairs do take a lot of hits. They need a lot of welding and fixing. Uh, you'll see a few tyres blowing during the game, no doubt. Long days, early starts, and a lot of events to cover each day. With 24 Kiwi athletes to keep up with, there's a lot of organising, a lot of schedules to make up, just making sure we can catch as much as we can. Luckily, Olympic Park is really close. Um, yeah, as is the train station. Out on the streets, it's a case of pushing yourself through the crowds. With a gold medal in swimming on day one, the Kiwi cyclists are fired up for day two. Philippa Gray and Laura Thompson are a tandem cycling team. They've got two events here at the velodrome. They've got the Kilo and the Pursuit. In the Pursuit, they're chasing another team. The Kilo is a straight time trial. That's this event right now. With nerves coming into play, there are false starts and crashes. Philippa Gray is a relative newcomer to Paralympic sport. She has significant vision and hearing loss as a result of a condition known as Usher's syndrome. Philippa has been riding with her pilot for two years. They won a bronze at this year's World Champs. After a slow start, their pace is building. And that was a bronze medal ride. Day two of the Paralympics and New Zealand have got their third medal. Philippa Gray and Laura Thompson, bronze medal. It's not even their favourite event. Once they did that time that, you know, if we had our best ride that we could beat it, so, yeah, it's pretty exciting to actually go out and sort of deliver, so, pretty happy. So before the race, two teams have false starts. Yeah. How does that, does that mess with your minds? What is oh, that? Well, it was actually like an advantage because yeah. the Brits were next to us and they've got these fancy heat pants, and so they had got their heat pants off ready to race, and then when they false started, they were like stressing out to get their heat pants back on, and I was going, oh, their legs aren't going to be optimal temperature anymore, so we're going to beat them.
Rower Danny McBride competes today. The rowing is held an hour outside of London City at Eton Dorney, part of England's prestigious Eton College. Uh, so I just, just want to check, this is a media entrance? You won't be able to get down to the media entrance without a vehicle pass. Oh, OK. So you'll have to come in through here and you have to walk through. But there's a shuttle inside that will take you through. Brilliant, brilliant. So just so in here, we'll here. We'll let you drop put the taxi drop-off drop area. area. OK. Magic, thank, thank you. you. No worries. Cool. Cheers. Awesome to finally see Danny here at the Paralympics. We've been following him for so many years now. Danny McBride is not staying in the village with the other athletes. He's based here, so you can get a feel for water in daily training sessions. As a spectator, you don't get to see a lot of the race. He starts a 1,000 metres that way, which is pretty hard to film as well. Danny only took up rowing three years ago. Even being selected to compete here fulfils a dream. Just prepping for Danny's race. One of the cool things, got race commentary here. So uh, I just insert this in my ear, turn it on, and I can hear the whole race, hear who's coming up. Heaps of warning, heaps of info. There were hopes of a medal, but the level of competition is higher than he expected. A Chinese athlete, virtually unheard of, blitzed the field yesterday. Danny finds himself rowing in the Constellation B final. He is determined to restore his pride here today. Danny's still right there, a length back. Oh, he's running out of time, he's running out of distance. Now the American's coming up too. He's going to have to fight for, fight for second place here. You tell by the crowd that they're coming to the finish. No, nah, it's going to be the Spanish guy. Oh, something's happened. The Spanish guy's lost it. Danny's pulling through. His opponent's chest trap has come undone. As paraplegics, they need that to hold themselves steady. Half a length clear. Here we go, here we go. This is it, this is it. And finish line. Nice. Five minutes, six seconds. Danny just, he's won the B final. He's come home strong, he's finished it off. Nice, mate. Danny's acknowledging the other guy. Good sportsmanship, mate. But well done yourself, too. Hold it up on the bus. Congrats. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Bit of sweet, eh? Bit of sweet. Bit of sweet, bit of sweet. Take us through the race. I woke up this morning feeling the best. I guess the pressure was off, you know, even though I still wanted to win this race, the pressure was off a little bit. And I probably woke up feeling the best I've ever felt. You know, the body was fresh and mind was fresh. And I was on the start blocks just thinking, this is it, you know, like, you've got to be seventh. And I actually thought I was eighth until about 50 metres to go. It is Danny's first Paralympics after breaking his spine in a forestry accident. How are you? You? The family's all here to support him. Yeah, yeah, yep. Come on. Now, anybody else want a quick? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> At the athlete's village, Cameron Leslie's woken to his big day. He's ready to defend his world record title in the 150 metre individual medley. Yeah, you get behind the blocks, it was all about just being focused and knowing, trusting that what you've done in training is, yeah, it's been the right stuff and you know that it is good enough to do, to, to perform as to what your goals you've set. The family's out in force to support Cameron. Four years ago in Beijing, Cameron Leslie got a world record and a gold medal in the 150 metre individual medley. Here in London, he wants to repair that gold medal and smash his own world record.
guess the idea was to to go out hard in the backstroke like I, like I always have, but the the key point of difference was the breaststroke leg. Uh, in the past, I've always just consolidated my lead and and tried to tried to to stay there. Um, but this time, we, we've we put a lot of effort into working on not just fitness and breaststroke, but also uh, technique and speed. The winner of the gold medal and Paralympic champion, representing New Zealand, Cameron Leslie. Cameron Leslie comes forward, 22 years of age, with that massive world record, 225.98. He was first off the blocks in 0.49. Cameron Leslie. representing New Zealand, Mary Fisher. This is 19-year-old Mary's first Paralympics. She wasn't picked as one to watch. Even with a strong swim team, it's not off New Zealand has two swimmers in the one race. Mary Fisher's already got a bronze in the bag, and she got a Paralympic record in the heats this morning. Anya Kelly Costello is going to have her work cut out for her if she's to beat her teammate. Mary makes the final in each of her five races and ultimately takes away a gold, two silvers, and a bronze. In this, the 100 metre backstroke, she finishes just 12 one hundredths of a second behind the Japanese gold medalist in an Oceania record time. In a few days, she's in another final, the 200 metre individual medley. She takes gold and sets a new world record. It, it couldn't have gone be any better. Um, a world record is just crazy. Um, uh, yeah, I had a great start, great tappers, and um, yeah, just really, really happy. Can't believe that um, you're yeah, on day 10, last last New Zealander to be competing, I guess, that um, all the hard work's paid off. Thirteen-year-old Nikita Howarth is New Zealand's youngest ever Paralympian. So they're underway, and the world record for the swimming should be held by Erin Popovich of the United States. The quickest time of mine. I didn't really expect that much noise, but I was racing in a person like Great Britain's race all the time, so it was pretty loud. But to have her come out sixth was just amazing. PB'd every race, you can't go wrong. Um, yeah, so it's been really good. Back at the velodrome, Philippa Gray and Laura Thompson are competing in the 3,000 metre pursuit. Clear from the pace, they're going to win. But no one expected this. They smashed the world record by four seconds. Gold medalist and Paralympic champion representing New Zealand, Philippa Gray, piloted by Laura Thompson.
Days later, they complete their set of medals, adding a silver in the time trial on the road. Gold, silver, bronze and a world record. It feels really good. It feels like well, everything that Laura and I have um, given up and trained hard for is paying off, so it's good. We always talked about it, even like getting one of each, that was sort of something we'd always joke about, you know, and I'd say like, oh, if we had the ultimate games, we'd probably be like a bronze in the kilo, because we knew that was sort of there or thereabouts, a gold in the pursuit, because that's the one we sort of targeted. And then we thought maybe we could pick up a wee medal in the TT if we had a good ride. But it's so it's strange to then come here and actually done that. It yeah. sort of feels a bit weird, you know? You're like, oh well. But being here and just, just seeing each sport as it is, you know, it's, you appreciate more what they put in, and and to see them achieve is just, uh, yeah, it makes you makes you feel like a Kiwi. It brings all those moments home that are that are cool and special, and and really feelings that are hard to describe. At the close of the games, New Zealand's tally is 17 medals, including six gold.